I'm Brittany. I'm a licensed elementary school teacher, but I'm staying home right now with my two kiddos. And today we're going to talk about making your young child's obsession into a curriculum. Okay, so something that um, I had a parent once ask me uh, is, well, let me back up. Okay, so this parent said that their child was on the ASD spectrum. For those of you who don't know, the ASD spectrum is the autistic um, autism spectrum disorder. <laughs> and what that means is people who have been diagnosed with autism, they're not, you've met one person with autism, you, autism you've met one person with autism. That's, um, I don't know who to give the, uh, credit for that quote, but I've read it a number of times, I've heard it a number of times, and I know it's on, I don't know who said it, but I know, <laughs> I know it's a, it's a well-known um, statement. And that's because people with autism are, they have individual likes and dislikes, and they have um, the areas in which they, they're brilliant and the areas in which they need help. Um, everyone's different, but something that does come up a lot um, in children who have who are on the ASD spectrum is that a lot of them have obsessions. Now, um, your child doesn't have to be on the ASD spectrum to use what I'm about to tell you. Um, any parent can use this really. Um, honestly, kind of should use this because it's a, it's a great way to get your child involved in their education. Um, but what I'm just starting off with is that a lot of children who are on the ASD spectrum do have obsessions. Some of them, it, it can be train or ballet or, you know, I've seen, um, they're going to be Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, my mom had a student once whose obsession was with plumbing. Um, there are all sorts of obsessions, you know, as many things as there are in the universe children can have obsessions with. Um, something that you can do as a parent to help them get interested in their education is to funnel that education in the direction of their obsession. Now, once again, your child does not have to be on the ASD spectrum for this. Um, what they can do, what you can do is you can take what they love and use it in their school. So, and what I like to do is I like to teach people how to do this on a budget. Now, there are a million different manipulatives that you can do this with. Um, you can order, you can, you know, get all the books, you can, uh, you know, find, you can always spend more money, but we're going to start very basic. Um, we're going to take the example of trains today because my son does love trains and so we have a lot of train stuff around the house. Um, and again, what, what the goal is with this is to use something that your child loves in, in order to get them to engage in education. Because if children don't want to learn, it's going to be much harder to get them to learn. Um, and again, all children have things that they're interested in. So especially when they're young and you're not as worried about, you know, are they, they going to get tested on this? Or, you know, are they going to have a huge, um, you know, essay due on that? This is something you can do when they're young to harness that energy. <laughs> learning. So um, let's start with trains. Well, first of all, if we want to talk about the English uh, language arts, CLA, there are five gazillion books on trains. Um, I love this book, Train Song. I got this at a used, a library used book sale. Um, you can get books at uh, yard sales. When we lived in Little Rock, there was a, um, there's a store that's right across the parking lot from the library and they take all the library cast offs because books are only allowed to be checked out so many times um, when a library uses it. So when they're done, they just sell it like a used book. And I got this one, I think for, I don't know, less than $2, two, two bucks, maybe tops. Um, this kind of book is usually $16 new. So um, you can get all the train books, and you can do this from the library. You don't have to own these. Now, if your child has a favorite, yeah, maybe pick it up. Uh, go to abooks.com, see if you can um, order the book used from there. But you can start, the, the honestly, the best thing you can do for any child's education um, is read to them. More important than anything else is read, 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 read when they're younger. And get them interested in books. Even if they can't read it themselves, um, if you read with them, they will start to learn things like directionality, um, you know, we, in, in the U.S., we go left to right. We, uh, they need to learn that the words actually mean something. Um, when we read, when we read the words on a page, they're not appearing on the door or over here on the screen door or the dog. This is what has meaning. Um, the more you read to children, the better they're going to pick up how reading works. They're going to hear rhyming. They're going to hear the flow of language. Um, 
one some, one thing that we often have to work with children is uh, when they're younger is when they read they will start to read like this it will be very monotone and when the more you read to them the more they're going to pick up on the inflection in your voice um, how reading should sound and reading has a different sound than speech when you're talking you don't sound the same as you do when you're reading um, so again pick up all the books you can on that obsession um, this is one of my absolute favorite books ever 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 um, for children is stream tra steam train dream train and the rhyming is just incredible I think I've I've talked about this book before just because I love it so much now something that you might not know is a lot of really famous children's books have other books that you can that are supposed to kind of accompany them and go along with them um, we found these also at a used library sale steam train dream train colors um, my son loves this book and it has it still has rhyming um, it has some of that just beautiful illustration um, my son absolutely loves these and then the next one is steam train dream train um, one two three so uh, you're getting the reading and you're getting math uh, technically colors are usually counted under the math curriculum um, so you can even begin to hit up other skills while you're still just working on the reading um, okay manipulatives they have some really fun little rubber train manipulatives that i can link in the blog in case you decide that would be amazing and your child would love them usually what they are is they're just little rubber trains um, of all different colors and you can use them for counting and um, you know if you're teaching your child how to do sets or skip counting or sorting into different colors or different shapes i don't know it would depend on the set you get if they have the shapes you know different different kinds or not but teaching children how to sort um, teaching them addition subtraction you know putting together and taking apart um, if you can't afford the bucket of very expensive manipulatives that you know you're eyeing um, some are more expensive than others some aren't very expensive it depends on how much you think you need easy peasy lemon squeezy now my i am not a i'm not a professional illustrator um, but <laughs> i can color and cut a train see how simple that is um, if I want I can add little windows or I can add you know make it look like a box car um, we're gonna make this one a little coal car I'm just gonna draw a little coal on top and I can color it in if I want later um, the point is so I draw this um, I can cut it out and I can use if you have a laminating machine you can do this yourself with the laminating machine I have this I have these self adhesive laminating strips um these laminate one side so if you want to do both sides you just use two um but what you can do is you can you know say you make six or eight of these or however many you want um you can laminate them and i'll show you um so they look like this this side peels off this side is the pretty shiny side so you peel it off you cut this out you stick it in you stick it onto the paper and then again if you want to do the back side you could do that too I'm not cutting this out right now just because um, but what you can do is you can make several varieties of these uh, maybe you do one kind of car and then you put numbers on them um, I'm not gonna do one for this because it's uh, not the not the uh, geez engine <laughs> can't talk today um, but you can put numbers on them this is green and it's number 10 so you're already working on colors and numbers um, and what you can do is you can do all the different colors if you want I just pulled out a bunch of uh, scrap paper and the greatest thing is this doesn't take much paper I mean you can do it bigger or smaller than this depending on what your child needs I've got red pink blue brown purple yellow green and orange and I have a white white in there somewhere the white's not as thick um, but you can do all of those and you could put numbers on them um, and you can laminate them and you can work with your child on order so you just made your own math manipulatives you just used color you've just used number and then you can again work on putting them in order taking them away putting them together practicing you know um, what spoken word goes with each written number um, you can also do this if you wanted to do a different set for write, uh, reading and what you could do with that is you could do um, if you're gonna do an alphabet you could do all one color you could do different colors if you want to work on consonants and vowels depending on where your child is you could do your consonants on blue and your vowels on red um, you could do a train with their name on it uh, if you just want to work on their name um, 
you can do sight words. There are so many different ways to utilize um, things that your child is interested in and so many ways to do it on the cheap at home. Um, okay, so uh, we've talked about math. So different ways you can do, you could make your own manip manipulatives and use them in math. Um, let's see, you can read fiction like I have here, which this is more just the, these are beautiful, they sound beautiful. It's to give children things to look at to keep them interested in reading. It gives them lots of rhyming. Um, as they get older, you can do more of the nonfiction route. You can get a ton of train books at the library and talk about how they work and what they do. Um, my son loves planets. He's kind of obsessed with planets, which is funny because he's two, but he loves planets. And so we get stuff from the library and he's not old enough to read it, but he's old enough to look at the pictures and he loves it. And so we'll sit there and talk about the pictures. Um, let's see, you can move this into science. And again, oftentimes combine that science with the reading time. Um, again, you can use if your child's into trains, you could use the science book, the nonfiction books. Um, go on a field trip, go to a train museum. We went to a train museum in Arkansas that was just wonderful. My kids weren't born yet, so they couldn't enjoy it. But um, if we go back, I know that they would love it. Um, you know, so you can do museums. Uh, you can do, there's all sorts of stuff online uh, or on YouTube about trains and how they work and what they do and where they go. You could even, you know, if you decided to do a big family day, you could get on a train and go somewhere. Um, so you see, what you can do is you, you take the things your child is interested in and you move them in. And I only use children on the spectrum because a lot of times they have more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, they're interests are more pronounced <laughs> um, because they have things that they really, really, really want. Um, if your child was into Star Wars, I mean, you know, use Star Wars toys for manipulatives. Use, um, I'm sure you could find Star Wars cards somewhere, like if you had a deck of cards and you worked with them on their numbers that way. Um, so, you know, find your child's interests and follow it. You don't have to spend a ton of money. There's lots of free stuff on the internet. There's tons of books you can get at the library. Just find things that your kid is interested in and go with it. Let them follow it. Let them find, you know, follow their interests. My daughter loves robots. Um, my kid is kind of like a, she's, she's just a mini scientist in the making. <laughs> she loves nonfiction. Um, she loves to know how they work. She loves to know why they work. And yes, she's five. Um, so I'm probably not going to order you know, some huge robotic system for her yet, but we're working on, you know, they've got the little kits at like Michael's and Joann's that you can get. We let her watch, um, when, when we're with my parents, she loves to watch, um, uh, what's that video? It's like the robots fighting. It's a, it's a robot fighting. Battlebots, Battle bots, thank you. <laughs> my husband reminded me, Battlebots, she loves that. Um, you know, we can talk about, we can start to talk about the science behind things and why it's better to have a big hammer than a little hammer and, you know, this instance or that. Um, it just, it spawns a lot of conversation. And the more you can, again, get your child vested in their education, the further they're going to go with it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful. Um, I will have links to the products that I talked about if you decided that you wanted to get something like that. Um, again, I've also given you ways to do it on your own, ways to do it on the cheap so you don't feel like you have to have those things. I buy quite a few manipulatives because I am curious about how they work and if they'll help because I want to, um, I want to see if they work, I'm curious. but. Um, I, I want to make sure that I'm not giving you recommendations for things that you don't need. I want to show you options, tools that might help, and if it helps you, great, and if not, well, you can decide using my videos whether it, you know, it worked for you or not. Um, anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, you know, always, you can always leave me comments on my blog, um, BrittanyPearl.com, that's P-E-R-L. You can leave comments on the YouTube channel. Um, I would love to hear from you. Make sure that you like and subscribe so that you get future videos um, that I put out. And you can go to my website and you can get free downloadable printables, printables for your homeschooling experience as well. Um, I will talk with you later and you have a great day.